uh, come to the event here in Accra, Ghana. It's called the Motivational Evening. There are quite a few guests uh, who are sitting down, settling in. And uh, us, uh, we are just sitting in the back here. And we decided to talk to you for a few minutes. So I have uh, with uh, us, perhaps you can uh, introduce yourself, Sheikh, the way you'd like to be introduced. Yes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, My name is Nael Muhammad Kame. Barakallah. Professor. <laughs> Professor Nael, Nael Muhammad Kame. Not Nael, not Wa'il. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Nael and Wa'il. I'll, I'll come to his name later, right now, inshallah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Professor Nael. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Muhammad Salah. Muhammad Salah. Uh, myself, uh, Sheikh Nuruddin Lemu. Perhaps you can say a few words uh, introductory, Sheikh. Uh, Nuruddin Lemu, your brother from Nigeria. And an honor, pleasure, privilege to be here. Assalamu alaikum. Why is not Nari? The expert. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't. He said he is. He said to this day, he hasn't told his mother. He hasn't told his mother what he does. <laughs> So tell us, why can't you explain to your mother? I want to tell my mom, because she told me, like, well, what do you really do? What is it that you do? So I, I said teaching. So she said teaching what? I'm an expert on what? Teaching what? Like, <laughs> so it's very good if, if the viewers can comment on how to describe to my mom that I help people who are struggling with pornography addiction. Like, how would you describe that to your mother? Sexologists. No, no. She haven't, she haven't, <laughs> she never heard about that terminology in the first place. They, they, they use the word pornologist. But I think I heard that from you. That, right? that was a brother, uh, I think in Malaysia or somewhere, he came who up. introduced me once. The first time he said, uh, we have our brother, this and that. And then he said, uh, he is an expert in pornography. Oh, yeah, and he stopped there. That was recent. And he left the stage, and now I'm coming, and people start laughing. So I had to make the correction. Next, next he uh, came and he said he's pornologist, the, <laughs> the only pornologist we know in the Islamic world, something like that. <laughs> then pornology came uh, about. Yeah. So that just is... to explain to the viewers, mm. so I help people who are really struggling with pornography addiction, which is actually something now. Uh, being scientifically proven. It's not like, you know, a theory or It's an addiction. It's an absolute addiction, just uh, replicates uh, even hard drugs like cocaine and heroin. Yeah. In fact, and what I liked about your description when we traveled the last time to Indonesia and Malaysia was when you said uh, uh, behavioral addictions. Yes. So it's not the hardcore addictions to the drugs and so on, but behavioral addictions. Uh, people are hooked onto their phones, I guess. Uh, hooked on also gaming, mm -hmm. social media. Gaming is shopping. Very big. I know of someone who told me. Oh, shopping as well. Yeah. Absolutely. I know of someone who told me that uh, the the uh, the husband <laughs> comes back from work and he's on his phone up to eleven p.m. Eleven p.m. Mm -hmm. So it's a crazy thing. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so yeah. teaching you to unplug. <laughs> Mm. Oh yes, and focus on that which is necessary. And yes, you were saying. No, I just was thinking. You know, part of the same problem with all addictions is that it removes the God-given free will to choose what to do. So you're so stuck in this behavior um, that all the other priorities of life gradually you is, become captive. Yeah, yeah, you're captive by a new ilah. You know, you're like, yeah, it's, it's slavery of another. And that's why Allah says. Uh, uh, you seen the one who he has taken his own uh, design, yeah. design or brain or mind uh, as his God. Yes. And there comes a time when you become a slave of it and you think you can't do anything about it. You would need help. But this applies to the person who does that. He enjoys it and he's not planning to recover, nor is he seeking treatment. Mm -hmm. But a person who feels the guilt after word mm -hmm. and he is begging for Struggle. help and he's you know embarrassed to share, mm -hmm. he's not necessarily undergoing the threat of a fara'ayta man ittaqaba ilaha yes. hawa. Mm -hmm. He is talking about somebody who enjoys following his own whim. And because of that, the Almighty Allah put a seal on his hearing, his sight, and he simply blocked his heart receptors. He cannot recognize what is right and what is wrong. So you know what happens. And to add to that, yeah, and to add to that, when we look at Surah Al-Kahf, 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا Then what that means is when the person followed the desire so much, the more you go higher, the more this one comes down. And therefore, what it tells us also is when you want to increase your relationship with Allah, you will have to work towards raising the remembrance of Allah and automatically the hawa. Wait a minute, Dr. Naid, since you brought this up, you need to mention the reason behind the revelation. And the first part, because you said there are there is a contrast. Exactly. A good part and an evil one. So tell us the good part of it. Now, the good part of it in this case is it says, no, the other verse says, I will help you for 10 bucks. No, 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 don't help me. I will help you for 10 bucks. I will take it from you. First give you 10 bucks. He says, He says, من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرضا نعم and when we look at these looking at the juxtaposition yeah, between the following the hawa and also between the remembrance of Allah, it tells us the clear juxtaposition here is the moment one goes up, automatically it pushes the other one down. So talking about addiction in this particular case, the more we tend to follow the, the pleasures, the, the, the hawa, Automatically, you realize that, like uh, Sheikh Elimu has mentioned, mm -hmm. you become enslaved with that, and that releases really, that actually extends your relationship with Allah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I would want to add on that. Still, aspect. still, Sheikh, yeah, no. yeah, doctor, the reason behind the revelation and show us the contrast. Yeah. The contrast. I feel like I'm in examination. No, 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 no. It's only I wanted you to pay ten bucks. It's a very new position. Today, today when we went to the when we went to the TV station, he told me he's not a scholar. I'm not. Then I said he is a scholar. So now he's examining me. No, no, no. He wants ten bucks. You buy it for ten bucks. It's over. It's all about money. It's about money now. No, I'll tell you why. Because he shows at. Perfect reference, the, the most perfect choice in this regard. Because when Dr. Noor said um, about a person who follows his hawa to the extent that the hawa or the one becomes like a god, it inspires, not only inspires, it mandates to the person what to do and what not to do. Then Sheikh Amin quoted the ayah of Surah Al Jafiyyah, MashaAllah, Laqata illa billah. Then we had to differentiate. You can just put them here, put them here, put them. So we had to differentiate between a person who happily chose to do so and is so much sucked into it and a person who is sick or a person who needs a medical attention. Yeah. He's not happy with what he or she is doing. So he mentioned a beautiful reference in Surah Al-Kahf. And that's why when he said in Surah Al-Kahf right away, it clicked. Allah the Almighty ordered the Prophet وسلم, to turn down the proposal, the offer of the Meccan chieftains, Abu Jahl, at this time also Abu Sufyan, al Akhnas ibn Shuraq, those big guys, they said, look, Muhammad, you know, we're not against what you're preaching. We love what you're saying, but we have only, we only have one little problem. Look at your followers, these low class guys, the poor, the slaves, they stink, man. You cannot sit with Bilal and Suhaib and, uh, and uh, Ammar ibn Yasser. Subhanallah, the same was repeated also in Medina after migration when Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul and some of these chieftains offered the Prophet sallam, the same. If he, goes, if he give us a special gathering, a private meeting for us, we will follow you. So the Almighty Allah said, not a chance. It's a package. You take it all or you leave it all. So wasbir nafsaka. O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, be patient. Alongside with those who invoke the Lord al -ghada, in the morning and al-ashi, yani 24-7, they're worshiping the Almighty Allah. 
ولا تعدوا عيناك عنهم let not your eyes turn away from them focus on them can you imagine when Ammar when Bilal when Khabbab ibn al-Arat when these guys are being admired by Allah and he said about them يدعون ربهم بالغدات والعشي and don't turn your eyes away from them then he said while condemning the Meccan chieftain's proposal ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا أبين those whom their hearts Allah made them negligent of the remembrance of Allah واتبع هوا they simply followed their desires why الأخنس بن شريق أبو جهل أبو سفيان in public they told people don't listen to Muhammad he's crazy he's insane he's utilizing the jinn he's a sorcerer then at night they used to go sneak around and they spend the whole night till dawn enjoying listening to the prophet's recitation while praying night prayer then with the day break they bumped into each other so they made that three times while promising that they would never do it again so al ahnas paid a visit to abu sufyan and paid a visit to uh, abu jahl separately he said what do you think of what you heard abu jahl said listen up banu abd manaf and our family we were always competing with each other with regards to the honor who's going to be the chieftain of Mecca, who's going to be the Sayyid. And they offered free food to the pilgrims. We offered free food. They offered free water. And now they came up with a prophet. They said, We have a prophet, and God is revealing to him where on earth and how can we bring a prophet from Bani Mahzum like Banu Abd Manaf? So that's why, by Allah, I would never follow him. So he believed that he is a true prophet. And he believed that it is truly the word of Allah. And he enjoyed it, but because of hawa. Al-hawa, kib. Sheikh, many of us, they think it is too much when they hear the hadith, whosoever have an Adam way oh, yes. of pride of kib in his heart shall not enter paradise. Why? They say, an Adam way, tell us why. Obviously, kibr makes you despise people and it makes you reject the truth. That is the one. So you have the rejection of the truth. Allah says, وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ Allah Almighty, uh, yani Allah Almighty is telling us that they, 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 they are not belying you, but in actual fact, they are denying out of uh, their oppression, their wrongdoings. They're just denying it. They know you're, what you brought is correct. And this is why when people are in competition with each other, it becomes dirty to the degree that even though you know he's right, you want to nail him, you want to do this. It happens among scholars. I've seen it happening among scholars where yeah. they, they don't know you. They don't know much about you. They see you doing work. And for some form of jealousy that overtakes the heart, they would make it their business to make your life almost And impossible. they dismiss all the goodness that you've been doing. Yes. They say it's yes. useless. So the word uh, you use is a big word. Yajhadun of Surah Al-An'am is a very big word. Juhud. And, yes. and uh, Allah says about Prophet Moses and all the signs, the nine miracles, physical, tangible miracles. He showed the Pharaoh and his people say, Wajahadu biha. Wajahadu anfusuhum ظلمًا they rejected all these obvious miracles, yet they were certain that Moses is a prophet. They Harun knew he is a, was prophet. a prophet, but and they, these are miracles. They just denied it. No. They, why? Because dhulman wa uluwan. Because of their wrongdoings, al ulu is, is uh, the, 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 the arrogance. No. Yes. So because of their wrongdoings, they, they, they were unable, and that's why this verse that, that he recited earlier to say that aghfalna qalbahu an dikrina. It proves to you that if you are engaged in the remembrance of Allah, it is because Allah has invited you to do so. Mm-hmm. Wallah, it's a fact. Because if Allah says, we are the ones who made them oblivious of our remembrance, that's why they're oblivious. If the opposite is true. If Allah brings you towards his remembrance, that's why they say, ask Allah for guidance. Ask Allah for guidance. Mm-hmm. Don't just rely on yourself. Work mm-hmm. towards it and keep asking him for guidance. Mm-hmm. Now, Sheikh, now. Well, you know, you remind me of the verse in Baqarah, you know, يُذِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَحْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا Many Allah leads us straight, many He guides, mm. but then Allah says, وَمَا يُذِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ But He doesn't lead us straight, except those who are interested in going astray. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, just the points you are making about 
ignorance is not the issue. It is knowing the truth and rejecting it. You know, this from the Moses side and then oh, reminds oh, me of that. Uh, you know, those who oppose the prophet after guidance is clear, you know, that you are now responsible because you know what you're doing. Um, and that's the group that Allah says he punishes. But, um, and I think this just back to the issue of addictions. Um, Somebody can be addicted, as you said, and is struggling. So there's a jihad bin nafs to try and yeah. be better. Which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. And you have a reward, actually, even though you are in sin, but you are struggling to get out of that hole. Uh, and every attempt is one in which you are getting a reward for doing something that's really difficult, maybe easy for others, because they've just got good family support and all the other privileges. Um, but I think the thing to also remember is when you follow your own hawa, and that's your new God, yeah, uh, that's your new Lord. And you enjoy it. And you enjoy it, it's merciless. You know, like if you just go with your hawa, you're not going to end up with a balanced life. But if you can, I don't like you use the word addicted, but if you could get addicted to Allah, then what's Allah asking you to do is to take care of your family, is to have a balanced life, you know? so. If you and you still enjoy your family, you do enjoy everything. You know, you know, one thing I learned from our brother Wahim is some time back I was talking to him about addictions, and he was saying, Look, if a person has, say, for example, watched porn today and they're used to doing it every day, then they, they hold back for a longer time, and the gap between their binging becomes bigger and bigger. It's a big achievement, mm. it's an achievement. Mm. So, say, for example, a guy like Ramadan. Yeah, or once a week or once whatever, yeah. then there is a gap between the times. Mm. I mean, that's commendable. Yes. It's not that you were not commending the sin, yeah. but you are trying to improve. Allah will reward step. you for that. Yes. Then um, Allah gives us the month of Ramadan. Yeah. Allah gives us so many yes. other religious yes. seasons. I just want to make something uh, very important. Uh, when you make the distinction between those who are struggling and trying to get better and heal and all, and those who are enjoying it. Now, the problem with addiction is that it escalates. It does not remain at one level. Mm. So those who are struggling now and trying to get better, if they don't really seek out professional help, they will end up being numb to and, and tolerant mm. to the behavior, and they will end up actually enjoying it. And even, brother, we have noticed now a new pattern that people are leaving the faith, giving up mm. on Islam because of their addiction to pornography. Why? Because of the relapses. Yes. They relapse and then they repent and then they relapse again and they are, yeah, Allah save so, me. Yeah. So could we, we, we could comfortably say that if you are struggling with any form of addiction, seek help. Seek help. Absolutely. There is no way anyone can cure his own addiction. But well, it's simple. you know that the Prophet ﷺ literally mentioned what you just said a couple of minutes ago. And that's why the treatment is mentioned in the hadith itself. He said, every human being's heart is exposed to fitan, tests and trials, desires, lustful matters, and so on. So the heart, the Prophet ﷺ resembled it to a sponge in one narration. Another narration like a mirror. So when a sponge, you drop something on it, whether good or bad, it will absorb it. When a heart, which is like a mirror, is supposed to reflect the images. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, you need to comb your hair, you need to fix yourself. But if it is foggy, you don't see anything. How does it get foggy? This is exactly what the Prophet said. Whenever a person commits a sin, it would leave a black dot. Yes. And if you were to repent immediately, the struggle that you're talking about it, it will be removed and it will shine up again. But if you don't, then you add another one to it, and a third and a fourth, it will end up being completely darkened. So there is no mirror no more. So what is there? Like a glass that is turned upside down. What is the similarity? The similarity is normally when the, when the glass or the cup is put upward, if you want to fill it up with water or drink or whatever, it's usable. But if it is turned upside down, you keep pouring and it retains nothing. So the glass doesn't function anymore. The heart in this condition doesn't function anymore. To the extent that the Messenger of Allah said, so the hawa once again jumps to take the lead to become God. If this is good, I love it, man. Mm -hmm. If this is, if he does not desire it, like, you know, halal. 
He doesn't desire it. It should be rejected as haram. So the Hawa has taken the role of God, which is legislation. That's why my advice, and also, mashallah, I should advise all your clients and, and, and those who are seeking help, that it's a very healthy sign that you recognize you need help. Absolutely. The next step yeah. is to seek help. Yes. And, and Shetna, I want you to enlighten us also on one very important uh, question that always comes during those discussions is that if I come and tell you that I'm addicted to pornography, I'm exposing my sin. What's there the is, difference between exposing your sin? There is a huge difference. There is a huge difference. There is a huge, huge, huge difference. You've mentioned the issue of atheism. When a young man, when a college student comes to me and said, Sheikh, there are some questions in my mind. I'm afraid if I tell anyone, they will think I'm, uh, you know, I've become a kafir. And if he doesn't release them and relieve his heart and ask these questions to a knowledgeable person, he will become a kafir eventually. Mm. So what are you supposed to do? An uneducated imam or a person who's nearly half as well say, oh, stop for Allah, I shouldn't be talking about that. How dare you say that? An educated person will hug the person and say, come, you've come to the right person, one thing at a time. There is not a single misconception that doesn't have an academic refutation. This deen is perfect. This is not my statement. This is the statement of Allah in the deen and Allah Islam. There is zero errors in it. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Zero errors. No way. Even if you do jumping jacks 10,000 times, you screen in the Quran and the deen from top to bottom, from cover to cover, not a chance. So enjoy it. So if a person comes you for treatment, wait a minute. A, a direct answer to your question. Sheikh, you remember this young man coming to the Prophet and said, permit me to commit zina. Mm -hmm. You know, look, I'm willing to pay zakah. I'm willing to pray at night. And wallahi, we get the same complaint. People say, I pray at night. I pray on time. I recite Quran. This but this is my weakness. Mm -hmm. So what did the Prophet ﷺ do to him? Udnu. He logically spoke to him. Then he made this powerful dua. He placed his palm on his heart and he said, Allahumma gfir dhamba, wahfaz farja, wa tahir qalba. And let everyone utilize the same dua. Oh Allah, pardon him and forgive him his sin. Ihfaz farjahu, guard his chastity. Protect his father from committing adultery. Aghfir dhamba, wahfaz wa tahir qalba. It's all about purifying the heart. So you're doing this role, which is purifying the heart. Physically, and spiritually. I, I wanted to. One problem, them. if I can say, the, a, a big thing uh, is that when people come to us, from amongst us, there are those who go and tell others, they spread the info in community, so people stop coming to you. Or they embarrass the person. So we also need to educate general people who might be leaders in the community to say, listen, if it is an amana, if someone comes to you with their personal issues, oh. it is really a trust that you, do not, you do not divulge. You have to yes. be professional. Especially Don't us. I think that's a major problem. Exactly. Just, I mean, Especially just like the, the code of doctors, a doctor doesn't tell everybody. I mean, yes. the doctor has been given the privilege and the respect by you mm. to mm. even show your own private part to them. Yes. Correct. Um, and it's not anybody's business. And the doctor knows this is something that is just between you and me. And there's an amana yes. and a trust. Mm. And so when we have people who bring their marital problems, their weaknesses, porn addictions, yes. whatever, the mm. need for them to feel this is a safe space, mm. the importance also of the distinction on actions judged by intentions. Mm. When you bring your mistakes, your sins, your weaknesses to somebody, are you bringing it to boast about it? Or mm. are you bringing it because you need help? So it's the same action, but the intention makes this one permissible because if you need help, then the Quran tells you, ask those who know if you don't know. Yes. So I think, you know, just like in the case of medicine, um, should somebody look at their exposing of their weaknesses as just publicizing their sins, yes. or yes. exactly just like sickness. Dr. Noor oh, and Dr. Nayib, yeah. there is one valuable information that I want to share with both of you, three of us already know. 
We started a series of unplugged a couple months ago by accident. I mean, it was well, not planned at all. Subhanallah. He said, Sheikh, I got you a, a new mic as a gift. He said, let's try it. Subhanallah. And we tried it and it went viral and it was a beautiful episode right on the beach in Delhi. The second, the third, the fourth, even when we travel to Malaysia, when we come here and there, not a single episode is pre-planned. It is the, by the qadr of Allah. <laughs> <but> we, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the reason, the reason why we're sitting here, the reason why we're sitting here, there is a big crowd outside no. waiting for us on dinner and the food is getting cold. And we said, let's go then pray Maghrib and Isha before we eat. And we ended up this guy. <laughs> this no, guy. It's all about this guy. No, Mudathir. <laughs> Who's not Mudathir anymore? <laughs> Masha'Allah. No, he says, let's do an episode. About what? We have no clue. Did you? No. Masha'Allah. Did you? Alhamdulillah. So we introduced <laughs> to you. <laughs> we, we introduced to you. No, no, Dr. Nail. Uh, Dr. Just Nuruddin. Like, the funny thing. The funny thing. <laughs> Sheikh Nuruddin. Well, Muftimi was putting the mic. He used like. Uh, what's going on? What's happening? Actually, I, I was I was also going to ask him what exactly is going on here. He said, "Push." I was like, "Yeah." And wallahi, <laughs> and wallahi, I was going to begin the episode by asking him about his name and make the whole <laughs> episode about the name <laughs> Nail and what it means. Oh, but no, before, 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 before how many go, people? Sorry. How many Chef, people keep go, asking us to come? So yes. why don't <laughs> but we? But before we go, there is one important no, thing I will want to link. Up with what he said, I and mean, perhaps Sheikh, you can Sheikh. now. I know he's a scholar, and I need the 10 bucks. Yes, so um, there is this extension. Who needs the 10 bucks? I need the 10 bucks. You owe me 10 bucks, <laughs> sir. No, okay, fine. A, a, let's a 10 say, bucks, not Nigerian bucks. Let's say I have American let's, bucks. Let's say I have, fixed, <laughs> I have fixed the problem, so it's zero zero now. Okay, Wait, yes. you haven't. Okay, let's, let's, <laughs> let's see what you yes, yes. So the, the issue is uh, there is a research talking about sicknesses of the heart. I don't know if you have come across the TCM, they call it Takosubo Cardiomyopathy, or what they call broken heart syndrome, where the scholars in cardiology say that sicknesses of the heart actually breaks the heart just like we have a glass breaks. So when they come to say broken heart syndrome, they come to confirm that it's actually breaking of the heart. And some of the issues that you mentioned about this addiction is one of the things that can break the heart. And here they talk of anger, envy, you know, anger, envy, jealousy, extreme grief. All these tend to shrink, just like you have mentioned that the prophet says the You still owe like me 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> He's so busy with his timber. I'll give him the Nigerian timber or the Ghanaian timber. I told you at the beginning, give him the timber. He, so he, he knows it. He knows. He knows you better. Yeah, he knows me better. Uh, a call yes. to anyone who is struggling with uh, any sort of addiction, if it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, substance addiction, you need to so Allah you also him. help from the experts who deal with these, uh, you know, substance addiction. If you are struggling with behavioral addiction, alhamdulillah. We have the Aware Academy can help you. Okay. Wallahi, there is hope. We have seen people who were addicted for 40 years mm. in that cycle. Oh, oh, yes. Alhamdulillah. What about those who are struggling with hunger and they want to eat now? Yeah, down we conclude. <laughs> Brothers and Big sisters, time. we Let's need go. to leave. Please leave us your comments and please let us know what you'd like to be discussed in these unplugged sessions that are very impromptu. Jazakumullah khair to my brothers. Yeah, yeah. And it makes it easier when mm. everyone Respects each other and we all are on par, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Prepare your cash. Prepare your cash. <laughs>